Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, we're gonna talk about what is it you need to do to grow your restoration company, specifically with referrals. Guys, I see a lot of people make some small mistakes when they're trying to build out a referral network and they wind up not having success. I'm gonna break down the reasons why they're not having success in this video. I'm gonna give you examples, some of the things that I did wrong, some of the things that I see them do wrong, and then you can compare that to see if those are some of the mistakes that you're making now. If you stick around at the end of the video, not only will I show you what they're doing wrong, but I will give you examples of what you need to do to be successful. What are the best referral partners? What are the best referral channels to get fire, to get water, to get mold? We're going to break it all down today. Let's go. All right, guys, so I guess the best way or the easiest way for you to understand this is to maybe give you a couple of examples, okay? So I'm gonna say this first and foremost, the biggest problem is a lot of times you might have some existing relationships with people that know you, like you, trust you, and they might send you business for certain aspects of your company, but when you try and translate it to water, or to mold or fire, they might be able to send you one job type, but they're not very good for sending you the next job type. So here's what I want you to know. Just because you know somebody and they're sending you these types of jobs, you don't need to assume that they're gonna be a good referral partner or a good referral source for this type of job and this type of job. Let me give you a couple of examples. Well, and this is the way that I came into the business too. I was a general contractor, okay? And when I started my company, we actually built a network of referral relationships with real estate agents. And I did that because I was doing remodeling, right? They were able to send me remodeling jobs and they were also able to send me some mold jobs. They would send me mold because they would be people that would find mold right before closing, right? On the inspection report. And so I wound up getting these small two, $3,000 mold cash pays and it was good for them in the early days, right? So think of it this way, real estate agent, really good for sending me some small cash pay mold and really good for helping me land some really nice kitchen and bathroom remodels because they would sell the home to Tom or Nancy and then Tom or Nancy are gonna buy it knowing that they need to remodel the kitchen or the bathroom and then they refer me and, and now I've got this nice construction job. So here's what I'm telling you, that real estate agent might be really good to give you some types of jobs like mold and construction, but that doesn't mean they're gonna be good for you with water. Now, why wouldn't they be able to send you a good water job? Well, if you think about it, they're trying to sell a home. So they're not trying to like kick out some type of insurance claims process that's gonna take 90 to 180 days to get the thing done, right? Drying it out's one thing, but if you're just doing the dry out, there's gonna be a rebuild that's gotta get done on the other side before they can close this deal. They're trying to get this thing behind them as quick as possible with the least evasive measures as possible. Does that make sense? Same thing with the mold. That's the reason why they, want, they got an inspection report and they're just trying to put this baby to bed and that is your job not to make a mountain out of a molehill. So now you know why a real estate agent might be able to send you construction jobs, bathrooms and kitchens and mold, but they're not gonna be very good for water. Okay, so let's talk about another one, property managers. There was another case to where we got a lot of construction work from property managers, okay, and or and maybe even mold work. And the property managers loved us from that standpoint, right? They loved us to take care of the construction jobs. They loved it when we took care of their mold jobs, but it wasn't good for water and here's the reason why. A lot of times the property manager was sending stuff to do like maintenance, uh, like stuff that the HOA was gonna pay for, right? The HOA, not the individual unit owner. Does that make sense? So that's another good example of how a property manager might spend the HOA's money right? That's fine because that's allocated. But then some, in other cases, a property manager might be responsible for getting estimates for the unit owner, right? Well, the unit owner is going to want it to be as cheap as possible. So like, I'm just trying to share with you, there are some different dynamics. Your relationships with the property manager, property manager likes you. I'm just trying to show you one case where the property manager will be able to give you some jobs that might allow you to make some money, but small changes. So instead of it being for the HOA, it's for the unit owner, like suddenly that profit margin is not there, okay? So another example is this, water jobs with property managers. Property managers, they're not really good referral partners or sources for water, and here's the reason why. A lot of times when you're working with a property manager, as a third party, right? So you've got a unit owner or a building owner, okay? And the property manager is having to oversee the works getting done. Well, that unit owner also has a tenant involved, okay? So in this situation, the property manager just wants to put this thing behind them, okay? You've got a tenant that just wants to get the thing dry so they can get on with their life, and you've got the unit owner that's trying to keep the tenant from being displaced. Like, nobody wants to rip up the flooring and do, like, a 90-day remodel. Does that make sense? Like nobody here, none of them. They don't want they don't want disruption, and that's what the insurance claims process does. Now you flip that on its head. Pretend that we're not talking about 
a rental situation. Maybe it's a building owner or maybe it's a single family residence. Pretend that's your home. Well, you don't really care if you have to move out or not. The home is the biggest investment for many people. They want it done right. You understand? A renter doesn't necessarily care. They want the fans out of there or the property owner wants it done as cheap as possible because they don't want the renter to move out. Whereas if you own the home, you want it done right because you don't want mold in your house. Does that make sense? So like that's an example where a single family residence, you might get a desirable outcome. But when you're working with a multifamily residence and a property manager, it's not a desirable outcome. That's the dynamic of a rental versus a property owner. Does that make sense? So at this point, we've covered two scenarios, how you could have someone that likes you and they can send you job types. You can, like I said, a property manager, a real estate agent, they like you. They say that they'll send you water jobs, but even if they do send you water jobs, like a property manager is going to want it or a real estate agent. Those need to be small cash pays that can be turned quickly. And if you're in the restoration business, you don't want a bunch of little small cash pays, right? Like you take them as you get them, but you want the good ones, right? We want that big five pound bass, baby. So we're not looking for those little small ones. We're looking for the big ones. We'll talk in a minute about how you'd go about getting some of those bigger ones. But at this point in the video, I at least want to show you how a real estate agent and a property manager might be good for some things, but not good for others. And so to recap on this, I really want you to know this. When I have some people coming into some of our upper end programs, we're helping them build out referral trees. And a referral tree is someone that can send you at least three jobs into your business in 90 days. So when we're talking about building out referral trees of plumbers, they might say, well, we get a lot of work currently from property managers. We're covered up. And I'm like, yeah, but like at the end of the day, those cash pay mold jobs from property managers, that's not what you want if you want a water damage restoration company. Does that make sense? So you just be aware. I'm not telling you to stop doing the mold jobs for the property managers. I'm just telling you, stop trying to get water jobs from the property managers, okay? There's better ways to get it. And that's what we're gonna talk about now. At this point, we can transition from what they were doing wrong to what you need to do, okay? So let's start off with this. If you're a restoration company and you guys do mold and you want mold, here's some great referral partners or some great ways to get mold jobs. Number one, we've already talked about it, real estate agents. Real estate agents are gonna be able to bring you inspection reports that have mold on it. And those are gonna be cash pays in most cases, but they're gonna be quick. Like. How quickly can you do it? That's really what they're after. If you can find a way to do it between a thousand and four thousand dollars, you can make a lot of money from those inspection reports. Okay. Real estate agents will bring you numerous jobs that have mold or mold is present and that stuff needs to get gone before they close on the home. So the mold needs to get out of there before they close on the property. The real estate agent can bring you a lot of one to four thousand dollar mold cash pays. So if you like mold, Real estate agents might be a good avenue for you. Another one is insurance agents. Insurance agents are really good for mold for a few different reasons. Number one, if somebody calls their insurance agent and they say, hey, I've got mold. In many cases, many policies don't have mold coverage, okay? So if, if someone calls their agent and says, hey, I've, I need to file a claim, I've got mold, and they don't have coverage for mold, the agent's gonna say that won't be paid, that won't be covered, and they won't file the claim or they'll tell them it'll get denied, okay? So really, in some cases, here's what could be going on. It could be a water job with a little bit of mold on top. That's what we see a lot of. But either way, I'm just gonna share with you, the insurance agents will give you more mold jobs in many cases because there are a lot of policies that don't pay for mold. And if a policy holder or an insured calls their agent stating they've got a mold problem and there's no coverage for mold, that insurance agent is gonna refer somebody out and he's gonna look for someone to do, uh, do it cheaply and quickly, and that's where you're gonna come back in, okay? So if you're gonna build a relationship with insurance agents, um, and specifically, if they don't have mold coverage, you wanna to go to that insurance agent, you wanna be able to tell that insurance agent, hey, if you've got clients that are trying to file claims for mold and there's no coverage for mold, let us get out there. We'll get in, get out, we'll be a good option. And so that's how insurance agents can be a good referral partner for you for mold. And Google Maps, guys, if you own a restoration company, you will get a lot of Google Maps leads for mold. And I guess the biggest reason for this is water is more of an emergency. Mold, I mean, once it's there, it's there. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people will live with mold for a while and then something will happen, it'll get wet again, they'll smell it. In case you don't know, mold once it's there if it's not wet like you don't smell anything right so if it's it's out of sight out of mind wet building materials is what gives somebody the smell of mold that odor that's the bacteria okay from the building materials when the fungus is wet so i'm just saying it could be a situation where the mold been there but it wasn't wet now it rained the leak happened again and that mold got activated then so once they start smelling that 
They're going to go to Google Maps and then, you know, they're going to say, you know what? I've been putting up with this long enough. And Windows is a good example. OK, you can have a leaky window, right? And it only leaks when you have a super heavy rain, something like that. That could be a situation where it only takes that hard rain this month. As I record this, I think we're here in late April, right? So we're at the rainy season. So these are examples why you might start to suddenly get calls for mold from Google Maps because once they start smelling that mold, they're gonna realize they need to put this thing to bed. They're gonna call you. And so Google Maps will get you a lot of mold. Again, we've already talked about property managers. Property managers will be able to give you mold jobs too, but a lot of those are gonna be cash pays. So just be mindful of that. Listen, if you get a bunch of mold calls, you don't know any different guys, you can convert those to water jobs. If they're wet, you can convert those to water jobs. I have helped several guys go from five hundred dollars to $600,000 a year to eight dollars or $900,000 a year, not with any more leads, but just starting to convert the mold jobs to water or to get those cash pays converted to insurance claims. Guys, if you do mold and you see plenty of mold and you're not converting them to water, reach out to me, go to whatwashane.com. I can show you how to fix that. Okay, that's easy money, easy money. Those are the ways that you can get good jobs from mold, right? Real estate agents, insurance agents, Google Maps number, property managers, okay? So now let's talk about fire. If you wanna get jobs for fire, you guys probably already know this, but if you don't, I'm gonna share with you. So guess who a good referral partner for fire would be? The fire department, yes, that's right. When you have a fire, the fire department will get called. Those are gonna be your first responders, okay? And now I'll say this, I've told a lot of you guys this, when you're getting into restoration, you got water, fire, mold, you need to focus on a gateway job. That's gonna be fire, it's gonna be water. Water's just easier, cleaner, nicer, neater, better. I like water better. A lot of guys like fire. So if that's your thing, hey, have at it. It's a little more advanced, a little more complicated. If you got to start with something, I would start with water. First responders, fire departments, those are going to be good for getting fire jobs. First responders in terms of police also get called out for the fire. So you can get referred out from either one of those fire or the police department. Okay. And more than anything, just using scanners. If you want to get into fire, fire chasing is a thing and you can Google more into that if you want, but that's basically just like you have ambulance chasers. You hear the attorneys talk about that for personal injuries. Same thing happens here. Restoration companies is what they do. They will hire a fire chaser. They'll listen to the scanner looking for a fire. Boom, they drive straight out there and they are looking to sign that job that night, that day. Okay. So fire chasing is the way. So again, fire, fire departments, police officers, fire chasing. And then of course you can get work from adjusters as well. Fire gets a little more complicated because fire can be broken up into like the emergency response portion of fire, like where you're drying it out if they put water on it, or if you're doing the structural cleaning. So again, fire's a little more complicated, but I'll just say this, you can get a lot of work from adjusters for fire and insurance agents too. Okay. Insurance agents too. We've talked about mold. We've talked about fire. Now let's talk about the last one water now we're finally got my babies save the best for last guys it's pretty simple you've probably heard me say this before but if you haven't i'm gonna make this very very simple there is a trifecta that you will want for water jobs number one the internet there's no phone book anymore guys if somebody needs to call somebody even if they get referred they say hey go call surf pro go call service master go call acme restoration whatever they're not going to go to a phone book they're going to go to the internet and they're going to go search for that so that's the reason why the internet is a really good place to get leads for water jobs okay internet's a great one guys if you don't already know you should already be making 20 to forty thousand dollars a month of mitigation from the internet right now okay if you've got fifty thousand people within a 30 mile radius of your home or office, you should be able to do at least $20,000 a month of mitigation just from the internet. If you're not, go to workmachine.com. We can line you out on that, okay? So the internet's a great way to get those jobs. It could be from Google Maps, paper call, paper lead, any one of those, but the internet is a great, great source. Next one is insurance agents. Guys, insurance agents do see a lot of water jobs. Now, they don't always show up as claims. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been out to go sign a job and you couldn't sign it? and that job came to you from like a plumber or the internet. Have you ever heard them say this? Oh man, um, I think I just wanna call my agent. And that's because sometimes if they don't know what to do, they don't know if they got coverage, if they don't know you, they don't like you, they don't trust you, they're probably gonna call someone they trust and that's gonna be their insurance agent. And I got news for you, if you leave that job that night, you will not be back. You will not be back. They're gonna send a green truck out there the next day. But insurance agents don't see a lot of claims, but they do get a lot of questions. And I'll tell you guys more about that. Go to workmachine.com. I got an entire training based on why you don't get more claims from agents because they don't get claims, baby. They get questions. Okay, they get questions. And then last but not least, we're talking about plumbers. Guys, plumbers are the best way to get water jobs. And here's the next reason why. Because when you're working with residential plumbers, they only get called out for residential jobs. If you have a water leak, 
guess what they tell you to do? If you have an active leak, they're going to say, have you, have you called a plumber? Like the carrier says that, the insurance agent says that, they all say that. Because there's many cases where you have a leak that you may not need mitigation. Like it may not be on the P-trap or it, you know what I'm saying? You can have a leak and it doesn't make a big, big mess or it's not worth filing a claim. In many cases, they're going to tell you to call the plumber first and then get it evaluated. Okay. And that's the reason why getting that plumber to refer you once they're out there, dude, that's it. I mean, that is it. That's peanut butter and jelly. Okay. So plumbers is absolutely the best. Okay. To get referred out for residential water damage jobs. So start to go back and put a bow on this thing. Hopefully now at this point, you've understand this. Just because they're good at sending you one job type doesn't mean they're going to be good at sending you the next job type. Here's what I want you to know more than anything. We just got done talking about it. If you want residential water jobs, insurance agents, plumbers, and the internet, that's all you need to worry about. I didn't say property managers. I didn't say real estate agents. Did you notice that? So if you just focus on those three to get water jobs, you're going to be good. When it comes to getting fire, just focus on the fire departments, the police, and doing fire chasing. And then if you want to go after adjusters, okay? Property managers, maybe, maybe not. It really kind of depends if you're going to do like a single family or a multifamily dwelling. Fire is a little more complicated. I'm just going to tell you it's outside of my bag, okay? For mold, mold, just like what we said, real estate agents, insurance agents, property managers, a lot of those are going to be cash pays, okay? But here's what I want you to do and know more than anything else. Just because they send you one job type does not mean they're going to be able to send you water jobs. That means they may not be able to send you water jobs. And here's all you got to do. Focus on those three that I just told you about. Insurance agents, plumbers, and the internet, and you will get plenty of water jobs. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, I've got three things for you. Number one, if you haven't yet, click on my face below and be sure to subscribe to the channel. Okay, we put out new content each and every week. Also, if you want me to help you grow your company, go to workwithshane.com. Workwithshane.com, put in your information, we can get on a call and see how we can help you grow your company. Lastly, there'll be some other videos right here. If you want to watch more content about growing your restoration company, check out one of these videos. We'll see you guys on the next one.